and it's the early farming community of Charleswood and we have two market garden families presenting tonight. Jack Kuiper will talk about the Kuiper Market Gardening family farm. Okay, take it away, Jack. Thank you. I guess I should give you Yeah, this. give him the microphone. You can if you want. <laughs> and, uh, That's very kind of you. I think everyone probably can hear. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, of course, to the Society for inviting me to speak tonight. Yeah, if you put it right in your... Yeah, that's good. Is that a little better? Let me turn it on. Is that a little better? No, yeah. now we're going. So, uh, I, again, I'll start. I thank the uh, Society for inviting me uh, to speak tonight. My wife and I uh, put this all together over the last many, many months. Actually, not. A few days. And... Um, we, uh, we don't have a lot of our family left in the province. My uh, brother's down in Oakville, Ontario. My sister's out in Calgary. My uncle, uh, who uh, was good friends with uh, Van Ruins and grew up with him, he's a 98 years old and living out in BC with his 90-year-old wife, and they're still working. They still have small farm and greenhouses out there, and I think they do about three or 400 hanging baskets a year. So they just can't quit, and good longevity there. And um, so I thought we'd just, uh, just recap a few things about our family and uh, how they got here. My um, grandparents on the Kuiper side, and I'm going to speak a little on my grandmother's side too, because she was also a pioneer of Charleswood. And, uh, <clears throat> but on my uh, grandfather's side, uh, they arrived here from Holland in uh, 19... 25 and uh, rented acreage up on Loudon Road uh, right near the school I believe and um, they lived there for a few years uh, but then of course Mark Garden needs water so then they moved down to the Karen property and rented property from the Karens and uh, right where the um, ferry was and in fact I donated a painting that my wife's dad did of the Kuiper or the Karen house not the one you know but the small one the uh, livery stable house uh, that um, my parents and grandparents lived in um, for many years there and um, I think it was I don't know if it was burnt down intentionally or by uh, vandals but uh, it disappeared quite a few years ago but there is a copy of the painting downstairs so anyways, away they went and uh, they started there. And uh, at that time, of course, the uh, schools, we had the Red Brick Schoolhouse, uh, which a few of us attended. And um, my um, parents, or actually my dad's side of the family, they started St. Charles across the river first. Uh, of course, taking the ferry across. And I believe it was Frank Morissette that was the ferry operator back in the 30s. And uh, I'm getting this from my uncle now. I wasn't there. And um, so they took the ferry across in the summer. And of course the ice road, maintained the ice road in the winter. And uh, went to the convent over there. Now my uncle tells a story where um, they were asked to leave the convent and come over to Charleswood School because somehow one of the sisters had her head, her habit pulled down and he said it wasn't him, but they kicked him out and the whole family anyways. So that's how we started our education in the Charleswood School. And, uh, and I, if you knew him, like Linda, he would do that. And uh, so I'm sure, I'm sure that is all, all very true. And, um, <clears throat> but it was, uh, it was, what, about four or five years they spent at that location. And then um, my grandfather um, found some property, which is at Ro Lot 1 Roblin Boulevard. Um, now it's known as the Landing, that housing development down there. And um, it sure has changed a lot since we farmed it back then. Um, so they're uh, at the Karen property though. They were growing the vegetables, um, mainly cabbage, onions, tomatoes and I had a few chickens also. So uh, when they finished the day's work and they had a harvest, 
they were loaded up by horse and uh, off to Fort Rouge. That was their big peddling area and door to door. And I mean, can you imagine all that work and then going for a few cents, five cents, you know, ten cents, and and uh, and uh, so and that's how they they started. Kept a little money going on Sundays. That was the big day where my dad and my uncle, they would take the ferry across and then they would skirt the golf course, which is Glendale, and find golf balls and sell them back to the golfers. <laughs> now, sometimes the golfers didn't pay them because I'm sure the ball wasn't finished rolling by the time they, <laughs> they picked it up to give it back to them, to sell it back to them. But uh, my old Uncle Henry says they would make 25 cents or so which of course is supposed to be kind of a family money, but they would go up to St. Charles Street, up to Portage Avenue, and um, he would, they'd buy a raisin pie or something, <coughs> but probably have most of it eaten, if not all, by the time it got home. So he said a lot of times they never told their grandmother where they were. And, uh, but, um, and again, that's the way he is still to this day. And, um, um, and then uh, now on my mom's side, uh, my mom was named, um, uh, or my grandmother was Alice McNichol. Uh, her husband John, they moved here from Kelso, Saskatchewan. And for some of you, you'd remember the little lady that was the caretaker of the Red Brick School and in the new Beaumont School. And that was my grandmother. And they lived right across from, I guess it was Andrew's store, where the Legion is now, and Mann's, I guess. And uh, that's where they lived. The house is still there. And that's where they lived, and uh, he died quite young, and um, so she kept, you know, carrying on. He was a barber over in St. Charles area, but she kept on, and that was fun having her, um, you know, in the school, because she could chew my gum till recess, and it, it was it was a blast, you know. And I could ride the big polishing machine there around the new school, and um, but it was fun. It was great, and they lived farther up on uh, Robin and then moved that and built that house. And um, now the only living member of that family, uh, my uncle, is just moved here to one of the nursing homes on Robin. So you know, we all end up back in Charleswood, don't we? And uh, so that was on, on that side too. Um, when that 50 acres and, on uh, Robin and Lot 1 Headingley came up, um, my grandfather, of course, there wasn't any money, and Lynn and I were just talking about this earlier. They wanted five thousand dollars for five, uh, fifty acres, and five thousand dollars was just about impossible. But over whatever they did, they scrimped, and he had twenty-five hundred. There was supposed to be an investor in Holland coming, um, and allow, uh, giving him the rest of the money for the purchase. That never happened, but. One of his doctor friends from Deer Lodge, and unfortunately I couldn't find out his name, he came up with the money and spotted the other 2,500, and of course that farm was bought. And to, to hear the stories of, of how we complain about cutting grass, here they had 50 acres of all tree property, and of course lumber was worth something, it was negotiable. So they would cut trees in the summer, haul them uh, into town somewhere, sell wood, but a lot of it was again sold in the winter to the convent uh, for, for their heating purposes and that. So they cleared out, as they cleared out the land, there's a, a double river bank there, there's a slope. So they dug a great big hole in the bank and this was going to be their house. Now there's two guys, three girls and grandpa and grandma and they took logs Cut, stood them upright, that made them, and then they put uh, logs across the top, and that's where they spent the first winter. I can't believe it, that they all lived through that, but anyways, and they weren't any warmer. The winters weren't any warmer than they are, they are now. The following year, they built a greenhouse on top. The heat <coughs> from below, and the stack came through, and so it heated both. And then Henry said that they had to build a. Um, ladder right by the chimney coming up because when the big snowstorms and that they would couldn't get out through any doors so they had to climb up, up the chimney to get back out to shovel up the door 
And uh, so that's life as, as they know it, and we would never even think of anything like that. So they started off with a hundred square feet room, square feet of room for, for all five of them, five kids, and um, that was like a, unbelievable. But they made it, and away they went. My uh, grandma Kuipers, she died back in 1937, really young at only 47, and then um, my grandfather moved to BC. My dad and uncle took over the farm, and then. Once my uncle visited my grandfather in BC and saw how beautiful it was and that there was no snow, he said, I'm gone. So away they went and dad took over with mom on, uh, on the farm and built it up to, to be a very nice farm. There's one fellow sitting here that worked with us there and uh, we did have hard work but we had a lot of good times too, didn't we? Pay wasn't much, and uh, but um, anyways. Yeah, it gave the, our family just a fabulous uh, uh, income and lifestyle. And, um, and Dad worked hard. He um, was one of the um, founding members of the Gardner Sales, which became the Manitoba Marketing Board, which is now known as Peak of the Market. So um, he was instrumental and a partner in that building they have on King Edward, I believe it is. And, um, so, of course, that many years ago went over to the government, and that was the end of that. And um, so, um, and as they, they got going and things were uh, progressing along, they uh, sold their farmhouse, which they had all lived in and grew up in. Now, it moved here in Charleswood somewhere, and I can't find it. I've driven the streets for years and years, and it was moved from the Headingley lot to somewhere, I think, on Charleswood Road. But uh, again, I can't find it, and um, I, if it's still, if it's still up, which uh, it might be, and um, we're we're trying to find it anyways, but with uh, with no success. And when putting this together, I talked to my brother who uh, lives in Oakville. He studied uh, agriculture at the University of Manitoba here, and then. Um, joined the farm with the rest of us and then when dad decided to retire and someone came in, some nice people with a big bag of money came in and bought the place and he and mom retired, he was only 55 and um, my brother went out west with Catelli Habitat down east and he went into the computer business but now he's retired and back in the farming business down there. So again, once you're a farmer, you're always a farmer. And um, my sister lives on acreage south of Calgary with two horses, two cats, and three, no, three cats and two dogs. And um, of course, her roots are always farm too. And, um, <coughs> and she's in the computer business. And, um, and after I left the farm, I went into the computer business and kept on doing that right uh, until I retired. And uh, Debbie and I bought our house, I guess, a little over 40 years ago, just off uh, Oakdale on, uh, on Haney, and, um, or on uh, Westland. And uh, we've, of course, loved it out here and, and uh, always enjoyed being here. So, uh, but that's, uh, I guess, all I can say about, about our family and the farming. And uh, I think the next presentation has got a lot more vegetables and beef to it and <laughs> so uh, so I uh, thank you for the opportunity and and I've enjoyed of course living out here all my life and plan on staying here and, uh, so uh, have a good evening thank you Oh yes, uh, it was. Um, that was just an everyday occurrence. Uh, after we ran the irrigation uh, through the farm, as you're walking along, you would just automatically stare down, and you would see arrowheads just that have been washed clean. I have uh, 
40 or 50. But uh, over the years, the University of Manitoba and Winnipeg mm -hmm. were allowed to come out and dig. And there's uh, a nice display at the Museum of Man and Nature. Um, and I believe, it's, I believe it's named the Kuiper's Dig or something like that. Um, and you see it online. Um, but yes, tons of arrowheads. And I guess that area was um, noted, um, I think the history said it, it was a, an area that, because of the bend in the river, um, our native people found it uh, perfect for harvesting the animals and, you know, of course, rendering them down. And and, uh, uh, and there's campsites there. And I guess that's why the arrowheads are all there, because that's where uh, the uh, animals were rendered down. So um, it's quite, that was quite, uh, quite interesting to see all all the university students digging out there all year long. And of course, we never gave them prime locations. <laughs> <laughs> I could add a little bit of that because through the years we've done uh, quite a bit of research on, uh, on the area. And uh, it dates back 5,000 years. You know, same time as the pyramids were being built. Uh, so when you talk about uh, History, they that, that was that was a sure thing. It was uh, now there's the housing development there, but there was two archaeological <coughs> digs there, and uh, it is called in the archaeological thing. It's called the Kuiper site, uh, identified as the Kuiper site, and it's it's uh, uh, really a wonderful uh, record of our of our history. So. You saved that, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and 5,000 years even before your time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good, uh, I believe it's, it's at the University of Winnipeg. University of Winnipeg? Yeah. And uh, so it, um, but it's very interesting, the, the history that is still evolving, that uh, you read about what what, uh, what was there at that location. We, we've asked about getting either replicas. I was talking a couple of days ago to the head of the Manitoba uh, Archaeological Society, and he said somebody could build replicas or we might be able to get a couple of samples from the Kuiper site to put in our local museum, just so that people can see the real thing and, then, and as well as some pictures of it. I'll, I've got yeah. some I'll donate to you. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll get them mounted up nicely. Yeah. And, uh, and then when we talk to the school kids, we should be talking about 5,000 years of history and, and 3,000 and, mm -hmm. and a couple mm -hmm. hundred of Métis history and and what came after. Sure. we got more work to do on yeah. this. Yeah. We'll do that. I'll get that I, ready for you. I wasn't trying to grovel for an no, hour. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm sure my dad and Gwen will be chasing you. <laughs> yes, we'd love to have one. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few hidden away there. <laughs> Hi, uh, you know, my name is Bruce Donaldson. I'm on the board of the Intelligence Historic Society. <coughs> actually, I found something. I was actually mentioning to some of the other executives a few weeks back. That was my first summer job back when I was 17. Oh, that's right. 1971. <laughs> Hard to believe how time flies when it's at the farm. And my, I thought it was 30 acres, so uh, all I remember is a huge field of tomatoes and hot sun. And Water jug and <laughs> yeah. hard work, and uh, he never really struck me as uh, all of my, virtually all of my co-workers were uh, women who came in. Probably, I thought they were very, very old. When we were 17, everybody. <laughs> True. <laughs> they probably weren't much older than, than I am uh, now, but uh, they were, I think, uh, mostly Ukrainian women from the North Winnipeg. From North End, yeah. Oh, yes. Probably worked for years and years, and the thing that always amazed me is. I'm a 17-year-old, uh, I thought pretty fit, young guy, and he could... Oh, work here all the time, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, the other thing I remember, I also worked at, uh, many years also at the University of Weldon Park, and I remember, like, probably one of your brothers, or perhaps it was you, he, I think he was a salesman at one of the tobacco companies. Uh, that was me. That was you. Oh. Uh, way back when. So you probably don't remember me at all. <laughs> well, no, I do, I do and uh, my memory's not perfect, but... Uh, yeah. But you're right with all those, uh, the, um, the young people like yourself that uh, uh, used to come out, 
and uh, you don't think this would be a piece of cake. But when it was 90 above, oh. and and these ladies, honestly, I don't know how they could work, and you can test to that. They just worked and worked, and and we were all sweltering and couldn't drink enough water, and they just kept on working past you, and uh, it was hard to keep up to them. Yeah, well, one last thing, I was doing some cleaning in what I call my office, one of the kids' bedrooms. I come across a little book, and it says, 1971, Jay Kuiper's Green Valley Farm, Lot 1 Hangley, June 14th to July 2nd, 1971. Made a grand total of 151.25 at a long quarter an hour. No. <laughs> well, I'll be telling my kids and my granddaughter. You know, and I got a lot of work for a bucket of quarter. And I got paid exactly the same as you. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, that and that was like, I mean, that was what we got back then, and we we're kind of happy to have it, I guess. Of course, uh, everything's relative. I think a dozen beer costs about three bucks. So That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas was 30 cents. That, that was basically how we used to gasoline. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really aging ourselves. Gasoline, beer, and beer. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Do you remember getting rid of some of the big oak trees, not just for lumber, but so that you, my dad talks about how hard it was to get the roots out? You know, um, I was told about it. I don't okay. remember myself, of course, but they, it would take sometimes weeks to get the roots out because at that time when they started, they only had a horse and then, yeah. you know, got the second horse. And I remember uh, them telling me a story about buying the first tractor. And, um, but the horse was still better than the tractor. I mean, they, they, the horses did a far more work and of course um, the way they had to do it but you were talking earlier there start digging some of these roots out and the roots are as big as, as a car yeah. and because those trees were five six hundred years old and um, so uh, and then of course the lumber well right up to when I left there we were still selling you know firewood and um, so it was uh, it was a good a good property and uh, and it's nice to see that they've kept some of the culture of the property there too, yep. you know, with the, the grasses and, and so on and, and that. And, uh, did you ever use dynamite? No. <laughs> no. no. My uh, dad's dad did. He said the, he was a menace with dynamite for me. The, uh, the Karens had the dynamite and oh. uh, they, uh, they blew up a couple things and, uh, <laughs> and uh, put some dents in a few cars. So, uh, no, we weren't allowed to have the dynamite. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. Did you know a family that by the name of uh, Offsted, who I think, uh, I know they used to sell his eggs when we were kids. Offsted? Offsted. Offsted. Yes, that does yeah. sound familiar. Yes. Loudon. Yeah. Loudon. Yeah. Loudon. Yeah. Loudon. Yeah. Loudon. Yeah. And, uh, the corner of Loudon and, and Wilk. Right. That was a Dutch family, too. Okay, yeah. And uh, it was quite interesting because then, of course, a few streets over from the farm over there, all the um, mink ranchers moved in, and there was many. There was three or four large mink ranchers, and um, that was an interesting business too. Uh, of course, seven days a week there because you had to feed and water, and uh, especially it was very hot. Um, those animals had to be well taken care of. Big business. It was a good business. I ran into um, a young girl that we used to work together. And she is married to a mink farmer right now. They're out in Starbucks. Of course, all the pelts and that go to Europe. I don't think anything stays in Canada anymore. She says it's coming back. It's it's still a good business. And uh, so there was a few mink ranchers here. There was, I think, wasn't there a fox farm too? Was it? Yes. Yeah. yeah there's a couple. And um, Morley Pert. Pardon? Morley Pert. Morley Pert. Yeah, the biggest, the largest one, where well, the bridge goes over. Yeah, uh, the new bridge. The new bridge, and uh, so. Um, anyways, I thank you very much, and uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and uh, we'll see you all around around the neighborhood. I'm sure. Double <laughs> the Thank you, Jack Kuypers. We were told you were a wonderful storyteller, and indeed that is so. So this is really interesting. <laughs>